I'm Jeff Pospisil, the 10 minute treasurer with practical advice for improving your church's financial future. In this video, I'm going to be back in QuickBooks and we're going to be looking at reporting. And I, if you've been in QuickBooks much, you've noticed that the default reports are, um, they're lacking in a lot of ways. So a lot of times you can customize them and I'll show you how to customize them. I'll also show you how to save those customizations and also how to make a batch. So that way we can be more consistent in our reporting and have better reports for making our financial decisions. All right, so here we are in QuickBooks and this is the dashboard. So I'm gonna go over to reports on the left and I'm gonna close that. And you're gonna see that there's probably close to 100 standard reports in QuickBooks, so that's a lot. Um, sometimes that gets to be an intimidating list. But when you find a report that you like that's that doesn't need to be customized, you know, I encourage you to hit that star, you know, and that makes it one of your favorites. So then it always shows up near the top. So I just did that total pay one, and now it shows up there, and now it's easy to find. But now I'm gonna unclick it because I really don't want it. So let me show you how to customize one of these. So there's quite a few profit and loss ones. And a lot of times churches will want a report that shows what was the income and expenses for last month? And I like to compare it to the previous month, but by default, it shows you this fiscal year to date. So whenever I'm printing it, this is July 22nd that I'm printing it. So that's what it shows through July 22nd. I don't want that. I want last month. So let's go ahead and click run report. And now it only shows me last month, which I also don't want. I want it to be comparative. So I'm gonna show previous year um, that, so that way it'll it'll compare June 2021 to June 2020. And now I can see that that to me is a much more useful report. Um, I also, this is a preference of mine. I like to see the year to date stuff. And just for the heck of it, I'm gonna just show you if you um, show the the change from year, from one month to the other month. And let's go ahead and run this report. And now you can see I got five columns. I'm you can see the difference between the two different Junes. You could also look and see how last year's uh, fiscal year to date looked versus this one. I'm gonna get rid of that change. So I like this report for the most part, um, except for, let me go ahead and scroll on down. I, I track my designated gifts in my other income section. So it's outside of my operating, but this could sometimes be confusing. I mean, this is almost a separate report if I want the designated gifts. So what you have to do is go to customize. And uh, by the way, you could also customize your header and footer here if you want. I'll show you that there's another way to customize it. I'll show you that later. But now here's the filter and you wanna filter it based on the distribution account. So this can be somewhat of a pain, um, but the thing is you're saving it afterwards. So it's it's one time you're, you're doing it and then you're done. So I'm just gonna click all these accounts that I want. So I know I, because of how I number my chart of accounts, I want all the 4,000s pretty much and all the 5,000s. There's a couple that I probably need to make inactive. Um, that's something I'll do sometime later. And I'm just gonna go ahead and click all these. So again, like I say, kind of a pain the time you do it, but think about it. If you do it once and you save it, um, you don't have to do it again. And it's set up to, to look right um, every single time you run it. All right. And this is also why it's so important how you set up your chart of accounts that made it easier. And now I'm going to go ahead and one other thing too is uh, you can filter on your rows and columns. So if I don't want all active ones, if I want to just have ones that have any activity, they're non-zero, uh, let's go ahead and hit that. So that way if they didn't have any activity, they'll be hidden. And now here is a report I like more. So um, again, it doesn't include all the designated gifts in that other income section, it's nice. So what I'm gonna do, except for, I wanna also change my title. Here's the other place you could change your title. And again, you could also put the logo in there if you want, but um, 
a lot of times I used to call this the statement of activities instead of the profit and loss. Profit and loss feels like more of a business term. Statement of activities, I think, is more nonprofit sounding. So let's go ahead and do that. And again, here's the logo if I wanted that or not. And then let's go ahead and run the report. And you can see it with the new title. And again, it looks good. This is the way I want it. So let's go ahead. Um, some of these ones, you know, next time they run it next fiscal year, some of them, the, the activity will disappear. And I'm going to go ahead and I want to add this to a group. The reason why you'd add it to a group is if, like, let's just say this is your regular monthly batch. So I'm just going to call this Jeff's monthly reports. Uh, what, once you add it to a group like this, then, um, then you could run them all in one single batch. So it also groups them together, easier to keep them uh, this set if it was part of your regular monthly reports together. So then you go to reports and custom reports. And you can see then here's my statement of activities. It's ready to go. I can uh, click on it and it'll run or I can edit it or um, export it if I wanted to on the on the far right export to PDF or export to Excel. And then uh, I already have a monthly one. And that one I, I use quite often. And that one, uh, when I click on that, uh, that, that down arrow, I could do export as PDF. And you'll see it download to my browser. And then I click on it. And that's all the reports that I send out to my leadership every month. And it's ready to go. They're set up just the way I want them. And so that ends up being pretty slick. So hopefully now just a little bit of general advice about reporting, since you're going to go through this work, customizing reports, making a batch. Um, the first thing is ask those people that are receiving the reports, you know, is this what you need to see? Is there anything that you'd like to see different? You don't have to ask them all the time, not every meeting, but you know, maybe once a year or so, just uh, remember to ask them, you know, would you like to see anything different? Uh, that will help it with transparency. It'll also help them uh, take some ownership because they're helping create the reports. So that's that's a good thing to do. So ask uh, the people that are receiving the reports. The second thing is I do encourage you to save and batch them. You might try to customize them each time. Well, you're not going to get consistent results. So go ahead and save them and batch them. And then it'll make it a lot easier to send out those reports. I haven't played too much around with the scheduling. I think that would be kind of neat to do. Um, maybe that's something to work with too. So if they're scheduled to run, I don't know, the 15th of each month, uh, that, that might be the thing to do too. That way they go out automatically. Um, I, I haven't played with that too much. I, I kind of run them right after I do my bank rec and then, then I send them out. So then I run the batch. And the last one is, uh, if you're going to customize them, you might want to, whenever you change the chart of accounts, go ahead and double check them. So let's say you add a new account or you change an account or something like that. You might want to run the reports that you suspect will be affected by that just to make sure it shows up right. So if you add a new account, did it show up on the report that it needs to show up on? So that's just one of those things to kind of keep in the back of your mind. You don't change the chart of accounts that often, but when you do, remember that always affects your reporting. So, all right, I hope this has helped. Again, this is a ministry of the Dakotas Conference of the United Methodist Church, as well as the Dakotas United Methodist Foundation. And, you know, I just encourage you, if you want to see something else in QuickBooks um, or you have questions about something, leave them in the comments and I'll, I'll probably look at that in a future video. All right. God bless you.